Yeah, hello. This is Matthias for MamoWorld.com and welcome to the third part of the After Effects tutorial series about Beauty Retouch. In the first two parts we already started working on this clip here and today we are actually going to finish this clip. The only thing that is now missing is the additional makeup on the eyes. And in order to add this makeup we mainly face two problems. First, obviously the eyes are moving, so there will be some tracking uh, techniques involved to make the makeup stick to the eyes. And second, we also need to make sure that the makeup integrates nicely with the texture of uh, the skin. So you can see here, see here a comparison at the left, we've just drawn the makeup over the eye and you can see it's not really looking realistic. You can see in the final result on the right the makeup nicely integrates and blends uh, with all the details and I think also that this technique is very general so you can use it for other things like if, if you let's say you want to add a tattoo, remove some blemishes, whatever, all these things are pretty similar. So a lot to learn today and now let's get started. So here we are back in our After Effects project and since we first need to track the eyes we bring the footage back into our composition because only then we can tell Mocha Import Plus that it should open the track for us. So we make sure the layer with the footage is selected and we say track in Mocha. And then we open the existing project from the last time. And now before we actually start tracking we think about whether we can reuse any existing tracks. In this case we need to have one track for the left eye and one for the right eye. And we haven't tracked the eyes yet but we've tracked these regions above the eyes that move pretty exactly as the eyes themselves. Of course they don't open and close when the, the eyes open and close. Yeah, These parts do not move with it. But uh, this is probably a good thing because this open and closing will be something we anyway won't be able to track accurately with the planar track. So we, are we just want to have the overall movement of the region of the head that consists of, of the two eyes respectively. So we can try this first. We Instead of retracking the eye we just use a track of this region. And what we want to do is to create a stabilized precomp around the eye. This means we want to, similar to what we did with the ear, we want to see uh, this region around the eye in a stabilized setting in order to manipulate it. So what we can do is we make sure that this rectangle here, this surface rectangle that we enable here, is set to a region around the eye that is more or less the same aspect ratio as the original footage. So maybe we make it a bit wider here. Oops, I moved the mask, this is not what I want to do. And then we go to export tracking data and as usual choose the corner pin format that supports Mocha Import Plus. We copy it to the clipboard and go back to After Effects and in After Effects we say load from clipboard. And now Mocha Import asks me again which clip I tracked so I confirm it and now I create my stabilized precomp. Now in contrast to the ear precomp that we created before, we don't want to create the eye precomp uh, on the original footage, but we want to have a duplicate of our soft layer to do it. And this is because we want to manipulate actually the, the soft layer because we want to keep the details layer on top. Yeah, the idea is we only paint on the soft layer such that later the details are still placed on top of this, so the details like the skin texture, the eyelashes, all of these fine details that are part of the details layer here, all of this should be placed on top of what we are going to paint. So therefore our precomp should just contain the soft uh, layer, so we take our soft layer. I actually take the lower duplicate because this does not have all the masks on it. Yeah, So we just take it and duplicate it and move it on top and I call it I. And uh, now we say Mocha Import Plus, please create a stabilized precomp for me. We choose the corner pin effect that we want and as usual keep the live expressions instead of keyframes option. And now if we isolate this layer, you can see it only contains the soft information and is moving with our track here. So now let's take a look inside of the precomp. So I turn off the solo switch here and say right click open composition. So this is now the stabilized setting and you can see that inside of the stabilized setting the eye is not moving much anymore. It's actually the case that the eye is uh, 
still of course opening and closing and a little bit of the movement is left and so if we are going to add uh, some makeup here now we definitely will to do some manual keyframing but adding the keyframes inside of here will be much much simpler and less work than doing it on the original footage because here everything is not moving that much anymore now you could start adding the makeup with a paint stroke effect what i actually like to do instead is adding a new solid layer and adding masks on top of it yeah so we say create new solid and make it kind of a dark gray and call this makeup and make sure that it's comp size and apply it now i make it invisible such that i see the eye behind and on this layer that is invisible i start adding masks around the regions that should be uh, makeup that could should contain the makeup yeah maybe I start here at the very last frame and make sure Roto Bezier is enabled because for some keyframes of masks, usually I feel that with Roto Bezier I'm a bit faster. And set the makeup to the region that I want to have the makeup on. Now we do the same with the lower part. And now we can make it visible again and maybe add some mask feather. I like to disable the masks when I add the feather because then you get some better impression of how it's looking like and here in the stabilized view which only shows us the low frequency so only the blurred version of the footage it's not looking too realistic yeah but if we go back to our main layer we can see that here it looks much better yeah it nicely blends because all the details are added on top now i can open the two also side by side so i move this over and say i like to have a new comp viewer now this comp viewer is locked and will always show me the main composition and if i now go back to the eye pre-comp you can see here we can now start fine-tuning our masks like maybe make it a bit thinner and this is now a nice workflow where you can really add in all the details here and immediately see a preview on the right side of the final result now with this one keyframe we now can see that the makeup already moves pretty nice with our eye here. Yeah? Of course, here at those frames where the eye closes, we have to add some more keyframes. So what you would do is to reveal the mask pass and say, well, at, in this region it's pretty okay. Now here the eye starts closing. So here I set a keyframe and now here the eye is fully closed so here i set a second keyframe and now you can see obviously it's not yet 100 percent so here in between where we have the biggest error the biggest error is probably at that point here here we want to add another keyframe and now if we are just taking a look at this region it's, it's still not 100% accurate, but you can see that with a few keyframes, you already get a pretty good result. Yeah? And in particular, even if it's not looking 100% accurate here in the pre-comp, where you can see in the stabilized view, you're really sensitive to seeing whether something sticks 100% accurately or not. But if you see the same in the main composition, you can see that here it's much less visible. So in other words, if you rotoscope, if you do this kind of masking inside of a pre-comp where the main part of the movement is already taken out, you will be faster because you need less keyframes and you will also be more accurate because it's easier to see little inaccuracies in the movement here in the stabilized view than it is in the main composition. Okay, so we would definitely need some more keyframes to get this makeup accurate. But since I know it's boring watching me adding a lot of keyframes here, I jumped to a version of the project now that already uh, contains the finished project. So you can see that in this one I have two uh, pre-comps, stabilized pre-comps for the eyes. Yeah, this is one consisting only of the left eye and one of the right eye. And if I open one of them, you can see that here in the makeup uh, we have 
masks uh, quite a bit of keyframes but still by far not on every frame yeah, here where the eye closes we need lots of keyframes but in other regions like here all of uh, in this entire region no additional keyframes are necessary because of all because all of the movement is like captured by the tracker and another thing that you can see here is that this for this second stabilized precom that I created for the second eye, I actually created it with the original footage and not with the blurred low frequency layer. Yeah, you can see that here everything is sharp and crisp. And this is because with the first eye I was not yet 100% sure what workflow I would use and whether I need to like manipulate um, the background in any way. But what the only thing I really decided to do at the end is, as you have seen, adding those solids on top. So I just decided to turn the background into a um, guide layer, yeah? guide layer, which means in the main composition, it does not show up at all. So all you have in the main composition are these solids. And hence, since the background has no influence at all, it's perfectly fine to also use the original footage, which makes working on it a bit easier because the background is nice and sharp so but this depends if you would start using the clone stamp tool for example for doing stuff then you should better use the blurred version if you later want to add the details as a separate layer on top because otherwise you have the details twice but again this depends on your workflow there are many different versions uh, many different ways of doing it. You can also see that here for the makeup I didn't really use a solid but instead I used a copy of my background uh, and filled it with a fill effect uh, to essentially get, get back uh, a solid. So there are many variants of this general scheme, this general approach of, uh, of doing this. So the important take-home messages here are really inside a stabilized precomp those manipulations get much easier and if you add something like the makeup on the soft layer and add the details later on top with the details layer, then they will integrate much better in the final result. Mm. Yeah, I think that's it for this part. You learned some interesting uh, tracking techniques with stabilized precomps, and you can see that rotoscoping inside of these precomps is a lot easier than uh, doing it directly in the main composition. And you've learned that you can blend these makeup things or also other things like tattoos or whatever easier on top of the footage if you just do it on the blurred, so on the low frequency version of the footage and add the details uh, on top. Okay, that's it for this part. In the next part of the tutorial series, we are going to look at some alternative workflows not using Mocha, but using uh, the mask tracker of After Effects. Uh, which I think makes mostly sense if the movement of the head is not too complicated. So in those cases, it's not like you have one workflow that works always best. It really depends on your footage. And so next time we're going to explore some other alternatives there. I'm looking forward to see you in the next part. Again, my name is Matthias and yeah, see you next time.